Hi everyone, in this video we'll learn how to flatten nested lists within Python. What I'm going to do first is import the modules I'm working with. I'm also going to set graphing parameters and set a numpy random seed so everyone can follow along and get the same outputs in this video. Next we'll go over Python lists and nested lists. Within Python lists are a mutable dynamic class that can reference multiple elements. Python lists are pointer structures, meaning they reference the data rather than store it. The advantage of pointer structures are they do not require sequential storage space, and the size of pointer structures can be dynamic. Lists can reference different data types within their structure. For example, in the same list, we can have both an integer and a string value. Lists are similar to arrays in other languages such as Java or C++. However, Python lists are more flexible than arrays because the size of the lists can be altered after creation, and lists have more operations that can be executed relative to arrays. There are drawbacks to Python lists. Lists take up more memory space than arrays, and conducting operation on lists takes longer than it would with arrays. Next, let's move on to defining what a nested list is. Nested lists are Python lists within a list. Nested lists are used to store data such as pixel values for an image or stock prices for companies across multiple dates. What we'll do at this point is create our own nested list. We will start by creating a empty list, I'll call it nest list. And these brackets just represent a empty list. What I'm going to do next is I am going to append lists into our nested list, and that's going to create our nested list. So I'll say while the length of the nested list is less than 10,000, and what this while loop is going to do is it's going to create a nested list with 10,000 sublists in it. Next, what I'm going to say is I'm going to append. And from here, we're going to call numpy and we're going to call the random module and we're going to call random rand int. Then we'll generate integers from going from zero up to but not including 1000. I'm also going to set the size of this to 100, meaning that we're going to have these arrays actually created of 100 integers. And then finally, what we are going to do is we are going to call the to list, and that's going to send our numpy array back to a Python list. We have that created. What I'm do going to do next is I am going to print out the sublists and we'll get to see the contents of our nested list. We can see that within our list, we have a, another batch of sublists and these lists contain integers. What we could do to double check that we actually have these as lists is we could do the same thing. We'll create a for loop and then we'll check the type. And we can see that the underlying elements within our nested lists are lists. So we successfully created our nested list. Now that we have our nested list, what we'll do next is we'll learn how to flatten these lists. The way that we'll do it is we'll go through five different methods. And we'll also set these as Python functions for our flattening methods. So at the end, we can test how quick each of the different methods are relative to each other. What we'll do first is we're going to create a nested list or a flattening list function with for loops. So I am going to say def and then, so this is going to create our Python function. I'm going to call it for flat and that's going to be the name of our function. Then we need to have an input parameter. It's going to be nested list. Now we can start writing the code within our function. What I'm going to do first is I am going to create a flat list. And this is going to be our flattened list once we get all of the sublists and unpack them into a single list. Next, we're going to say for sublist, and we're going to do that in nest list. We saw before that when we do this, we're going to get the sublists. So in order to get the underlying elements within each of these sublists, we need to create another for loop. So I'm going to say for element in sublist. And from here, what we're going to do is we're going to take our flat list and append all of the elements in the underlying sublists to our flattened list. The last thing I need to do in our function is return our flat list, and then we'll run it on our previously created nested list. Let's run this cell. 
Then what I'm going to do is say, call this flat list one. I am going to call my function for flat. Then I need to input the nest list. So I'll put in the nest list. And then we can also take a look at this and we can see that once we have this done, we've gone through a list of lists to a list of integers, because as we'll recall, for our nested list, the elements within the sub list are integers, and we can see that. And we'll do that for each of these, and then finally what we'll do is test how quickly each of the methods works. Next, we'll do list comprehension as another way to unpack a nested list. I'm going to call this def lift co list comp flat. Like before, it's only going to take one parameter, the nested list. And all we're going to do here is it's going to be a one liner. We're going to return. We're going to say element for sub list. And this is going to be in our nested list for element in sub list. And the way that this is written, it might not be too intuitive, which is why some people may prefer not to use list comprehension to unpack a nested list. But we'll see later on in the video that this is one of the methods that we can use to unpack it when we check to make sure that all of the nested lists are unpacked. For the, net, for the list comprehension, we're going to save the output of that into flat list two. Next, we're going to move on to using a module iter tools in order to unpack our nested list. The way that we'll do this is we're going to start off by defining our function again. I'll write out the code and then explain it. And what the iter tools chain function is going to do is it's going to return elements from the first iterable until it's exhausted. Then it goes to the next iterable until all iterables are exhausted, meaning that it's going to continuously unpack all the sublists until we have one single flattened list. So what we'll do is we'll call this flat list three. Our fourth method is going to use the extend function, which is a built-in function for our list. Like our for loop, what we'll do is we're going to create a empty list. I'll call it flat list. Then we are going to loop over it. I'm going to say for sub list in nested list. Then I am going to call flat list. Then we're going to call the dot extend function. And we're going to extend it by the sub list. And the difference between extend and append is that extend is going to take all of the values from the sublist and append it to our flat list, but it's not going to append the list itself, which is going to effectively flatten out the list because all it's appending are the elements within the sublists. Finally, what we're going to do is we're going to return our flat list. Our last method is going to be using the func tools module and also the operator module. To explain here, what we're going to do first is we're going to call the func tools dot reduce function, which is used to reduce an iterable to a single value. Then we have the operator dot iconcat. That's going to be our first input parameter. That's going to combine all the underlying elements within the sublist together, which are then going to be saved into our list here. So we have our, our second parameter, the nested list, which we're going to unpack, and we're going to unpack it to this empty list here. What we're going to do here is we're going to check that all the lists have been flattened, and we do this by using the double equal sign to compare all of the flattened lists. And we can see that we were able to successfully unpack it with our five different methods. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to compare the time complexity of our flattening methods. What this is just going to say is which one is the fastest. And this can vary based on a few things. So what we'll do is we're going to run this and then we'll take a look at our graph. Let's take a look at the results. And what we can see here is that the for loop and list comprehension were slower than the extend function, iter tools, and func tools module functions. And when it comes to unpacking them, 
you might want to use the extend function because that also avoids importing a module and it simplifies your code. Thanks everyone for watching. I hope this video was helpful. I included multiple references if you want to learn more about Python data structures or the different modules that we use. If you like the video, feel free to like and subscribe. You can also connect with me on LinkedIn, Twitter, GitHub, Medium, and Odyssey. Thanks everyone for watching and happy coding.